Hey, hey everybody, hope you're doing well today. This is Brad Cartwright with the next installment of the How to Draw series, a collaborative effort between me and you. Today we're looking at international economics and specifically the exchange rate diagram. All right, here we go. Let's take a look at the exchange rate diagram. And you might, if you've seen the exchange rate diagram, wondering why it is that I'm showing this diagram here. And the reason I am is that I want you to realize that the beginning of the story, and you always have to figure out what the beginning of every economic situation is. When you get a question in economics, what's the beginning? Well, even in exchange rates, the beginning is the basic supply and demand diagram. If you don't know how to draw this diagram, take a look at that video right there. Because that video is going to give you a little secret way of making sure you understand this diagram. Because actually, and this is not the way it's taught very often, the, the exchange rate diagram is based on the very, very simple, simple supply, supply and demand diagram. Yes, that basic diagram you learned back in microeconomics, it's back. And it's back in functioning in the exact same way that it did when the product was X or the product was, was paper or the products was posters or the products were guitars or cars or, you know, headlamps or something. But the thing is, in exchange rates... The product is just another currency, okay? So in order to understand, or better said, you understand how this market works. You already do if you understand basic supply and demand. If you don't know this diagram, check out that video that I just showed you. Go check it out, a little secret way of, of making sure you have all of the components of the basic supply and demand diagram. All right, so we're gonna take a look and imagine that this, just for a second, let's look at what the basic supply and demand diagram looks like. Right? You have a market for product X. It could be anything. Right, You have a price in euros. You have P1, 0, Q1, the quantity of product X. If that is Toyota trucks, and this is Toyota trucks, thousands per year, a demand curve, a supply curve, and of course the title. That's it. Okay. So what I want you to do, and I'm going to show you in the next slide, is just imagine, and this would make complete sense. Like This is the market for product X in what currency? In euros. And actually, if, if, so if you were to finish this sentence, the product for product X, the market for product X in euros, if you wanted to complete this whole thing over here, it would say the price of product X in euros, okay? That would be a complete thing to label here and a complete thing to label there. And the reason that's important is all that's going to happen, actually, is that we are going to change product X to U.S. dollars, and so the basic supply and demand principles apply if the product isn't, you know, wrenches or eyeglasses or park benches, but is rather the U.S. dollar. So this would be the market for the U.S. dollar in euros, just like it was if it were, you know, Toyota trucks in euros. This would be the price of what? Product X. What's product X? Dollars. In what currency? Euros. This would be the quantity of what? Well, if it's product X there then it's still dollars, right? And also the demand and supply would, would, would apply as well. This would be the demand for U.S. dollars. This would be the supply um, of U.S. dollars. And we would have a market that is, looks very, very, very much like, almost like pretty much, yes, indeed, exactly the same for a currency that we do for demand and supply of any good. So let's take a look at how we're going to build off of that because there's some subtleties that we need to look at. All right, so here we have the diagram we were just looking at, right? It's a little bit hard. It's small here because the purpose is to look over here. But this is the basic supply and demand diagram that we just showed. And all I'm doing is just blowing it up a little bit and changing and actually completing um, the, the, the full sentence here in the title, market for U.S. dollars in euros. This could have been the market for product X in euros. What's this over here? The price of U.S. dollars in what? in euros. This could have been the price for Toyota trucks in euros. The quantity of what? Trucks? No, U.S. dollars. So the basic understanding of this diagram is already in your head if you understand the, micro, the basic microeconomic supply and demand diagram. It is not a new graph. It is not functioned differently than basic supply and demand. It's just that now, and this is where you get twisted, is that the product that you're purchasing is another currency, and that just makes you confused for a second. But if you just separate out the fact that dollars is another currency and just think of it as like buying Toyota trucks, 
then it makes sense. Buying eyeglasses, it makes sense. The market for dollars or market for eyeglasses in euros. Okay. So that is the idea. So you're good, man. You understand this. You totally, totally can do this with a lot of clarity. All right. But there's a couple subtle switches of mind that we have to do. Okay. So the first thing is we're looking for the market for dollars in euros. So who has the dollars? And here's where you need to suspend reality. You have to suspend reality in, in a lot of international diagrams, but definitely in um, the exchange rates because you have to live in a world where only people in the United States have dollars, okay? And only people in Chile have Chilean pesos. And only people in Guatemala have quetzales. And only people in Argentina have the Argentinian peso, okay? So the only place that you can get any currency on Earth is in its geographic location. Just do that. I know that's not true. I know you can get euros and dollars in all currencies in all parts of the world, but you are not living in that world for this diagram. You're living in a make-believe exchange rate diagram world where the only supply for U.S. dollars is in the United States, okay? Only the gringos got dollars, all right? And now we're talking about the market for dollars in euros. So the only people who, in this case, the people who are demanding dollars are in the European Union because they have the euros. So that's really important, right? So if we're talking about the market for euros, whoops, if we're talking about the market for euros, um, then we, we need to like place ourselves in the place on earth where those euros exist. So this is the demand for what? For dollars. Where? In Europe. Okay. So the, who has, the only people in the world that have euros are Europeans. That's the other suspension of reality that we have. Okay. So this is the demand for U.S. dollars, right, in Europe. And this is the supply of U.S. dollars in the United States. Okay. Well, let's make up a scenario where this beautiful family from Paris decides to get on a plane. And they have gone to Disney World in Paris. But they want to go to the real deal Disney World in Orlando, Florida. They're taking their little... All their, their two children to go see Mickey Mouse and it's home in the Magic Kingdom in Orlando, Florida. All right, swell. So what are they going to do? Well, they are going to demand more dollars, right? Because Mickey Mouse in his house only takes dollars. And so as a result, we're going to have an increase. Hey, this is just like basic supply and demand stuff, man. Like this is like easy. Yeah, exactly. It's really easy. Okay. So this is going to be um, Q two right there and it's so small it's kind of hard for me to draw it all right there but p2 so now the market for dollars is going to function there why because the because the beautiful family from paris wanted to go see mickey mouse in his real house and so in order to do that you can't use euros in disney world i know you probably could but not in this make-believe world those those europeans have to take their dollars sell them and buy what dollars so they are going to increase their demand of dollars And as a result of that, there's going to be a new equilibrium price of P2, Q2, which is, in other words, in relative to the euro, the dollar is going to get stronger, 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 stronger. Okay? Now, I know a little family from Paris going to see Mickey Mouse is going to have absolutely no, like, discernible impact on the entire foreign exchange market for dollars. I get that. But... When you're talking about, ma- but, but if you just take that family and turn them into like a massive, massive government institution in France or like a, the largest bank in France, like they might have that, right? If they're going to transfer dollars to the U- or euros to the U.S., it could affect the market, right? Or if over a long period of time, there's in- increased demand for tourism in the United States or any goods in the United States, people need dollars in order to buy stuff in the States. They have to trade in their own currency to get dollars. All right, so we would end up with a stronger dollar, more of them um, used up, more of them uh, uh, a higher quantity in the marketplace and at a higher price. Just like any other good on the planet, if demand increases, the value of it goes up. And in terms of currencies, we say it gets stronger. All right, now let's take a look at the next diagram. Ah, what's this? Well, let me tell you something. This is exactly what we were just looking at, okay? This diagram right here, is the diagram I just drew, okay? But here's the thing. This is the market for U.S. dollars in euros. This is the pound, the price of dollars in euro. I just drew that increase in demand, and we started off with a, a um, equilibrium of 0.8 to Q1, right? 
Okay, well, guess what? The thing is, you can take this market for dollars and invert it and turn it in the market for euros. You see, in dollars. So this is the market for dollars and euros, and this is the market for euros and dollars. And if this French family that went to see Mickey, right, had to give up their their euros in order to buy dollars, then what happened to the supply of euros on the foreign exchange market? They went up. There are more euros up out there, right? So we could take the exact same scenario of the family wanting to go see Mickey Mouse in his real house in Orlando, Florida, from Paris, and we could draw it this way, where demand for dollars goes up, or we could look at it from the perspective of euros. This was the perspective of dollars. We could look at it from the perspective of euros, and what would we find? We would find an increase in the demand of, no, the supply of euros. Wow, check it out, dude. That's right. So if you look at this a little bit closer, what you'll see is that this market equilibrium is the same market equilibrium. That's where we started. If we look at it from the dollar perspective, right, it's 0.8. If we look at it from the euro perspective, it's 1.2. Now, when that family went to the foreign exchange desk, and bought the dollars in Orlando, two things happened. Number one, they released their euros and therefore increased the supply of euros on the world market. They got cheaper. What happened? The value went down. They got weaker. The euro got weaker compared to the dollar. But if we looked at the same transaction from the perspective of U.S. dollars, guess what, my friends? The euro was traded in and more dollars were demanded and therefore the price went up. So actually, if you look at this a little bit closer, it's saying the same thing in an inverted way. This increase, wrong pen, this increase right here is exactly the same increase as right there, okay? That's the same transaction. This is from, the, from looking at it from the perspective of dollars, which means that the value of the dollar would go up. It would get stronger because the demand for dollars went out. And this same transaction, if looked at from the perspective of euros, would look like this because that French family turned in, their, their, they, they surrendered, they increased the supply of euros on the market by leaving with the foreign exchange desk. There are more euros in the circulation on the foreign exchange desk, which what does that do to any good if they increase their... Availability, it lowers their value, okay? So that is really, really cool. And this right here is at the crux of the exchange rate um, uh, experience for you. And I hope what you see is like, that is really fascinating. Like exchange rates are supply and demand graphs that can be looked at from two different directions, two different perspectives, okay? But what I don't want you to do is get caught up in it being difficult. You just have to understand the logic behind it. And I think if you just look at this uh, video again and again, if it quite, doesn't quite get clear to you, it's very, very clear that what's happening in the dollar market is also at the same time happening in the euro market. If the demand for the dollar goes up, then the supply of euros goes out. Okay? Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Well, there you have it, the exchange rate diagram, a really intricate diagram that says a lot about the ways in which we operate in this world. Exchange rates are the underpinnings of so much trade. The value of a currency has everything to do with imports and exports, a fascinating topic. I hope you found that video to be helpful. Again, this is the How to Draw series, a series that's a collaboration between me and you and how to draw the most basic economic diagrams. If you have any suggestions, make sure you put them down in the comment box below. I read every comment that comes into my channel. Also, make sure you subscribe and turn on the bell notification so that we can stay in contact with one another. I see it as an incredible privilege and honor to be able to teach to you via YouTube. It's a crazy, crazy thing to have thousands of students out there watching this video, these videos every day and us being able to learn and grow together as, as learners, which is what we are. Good deal, my friends. Take care of yourselves out there. Be good to one another, and we'll talk to you in a bit.